great pleasure to welcome to Larry King Weekend composer, performer, Yanni, the major force in contemporary instrumental music, recently finished up the first leg of a world tour, his first in five years. His memoir, published earlier this year, Yanni in Words, became a New York Times bestseller. His new album, also released earlier this year, Ethnicity. Why did you stop playing? Well, it was, it was the right thing to have done in retrospect. I actually burned out. It's that plain and simple. Did it happen one night where you're playing and saying, I don't need this anymore? What happened? It took a while, but I had so many commitments uh, for the touring uh, part of my career, and I couldn't stop. It was like I, I, I did 60 more shows after I had crossed the line. Wow. It took me down. Pretty so much. after you had decided to stop, you had 60 more commitments. Or so, yeah. Were they more forever. difficult? Well, you know, it helps when you get on stage. The audience kind of helps you make it through, but then when you get back to the hotel and you're alone, uh, things hurt. And, you know, I've been going nonstop for 10, 15 years. And that particular stretch of time I did, I go to China and India, did the Taj Mahal, did the Forbidden City, and we did 120 shows. It's a the lot world of knows Yanni. Right? Yeah, that's a very nice thing. But you're as popular out of this country as in, right? Well, yeah, I think people know where I am around the world. Right. What did you do for the five years? I run away. I yeah. just, I took care of me. I just... By doing... Run away. I just traveled all over the world. First, I went home. I went to Greece with my mother and father and I assumed to fight my life. I just walked away from my career, treated it like it was an addiction. I stayed away from music. I never played the piano for a whole year, which would be unimaginable to me. And didn't miss it? Um... There was a, t a few times where I missed it, but I, th I thought it was very important that, I, that I, I wanted to know that I could enjoy life without my career, without my music, without hiding. A lot yeah. of us hide behind our careers. And Did you think you had retired for good? I allowed myself to think that. And, and certainly when I walked on the mountains with my father and we talked about all this stuff, um, I had to know deep in my heart that there was a very strong possibility I wouldn't come back. And I think that was the best thing to have done, because that, that really cleaned me out. We know of your long relationship with Linda Evans. She even participated in the book, right? Yes. And the friendship. What did she think during this period? Well, she tried to help. Uh, she wanted me to come back? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, of course, um, she also wanted me to do what I want to do. So she so supported said, you? Absolutely. They, they sensed, everybody sensed I was in real trouble. So <laughs> everybody was trying to be helpful. What do you think caused it? Just overwork. I think it's just the stress, the stresses. Of and success? All of that, all of that. And it, when you appear on stage as often as I have in, in my life, it, it, you give so much of yourself. And, and it seems like you, at the beginning when you're younger, it's no big deal. You, it seems like an ending. You just keep doing it. Who cares? Um, but it takes its toll. And my father used to say to me, you're being brainwashed right now. You're forgetting to live. You don't live anymore. You just work. And I, I could sense it. I knew that I was overdoing it, but sometimes the, the wave is so big and you've been working all your life to, to get it to become a wave. So when it takes off, you just have to ride it. Did you work on the book during this period? Uh, the book was much later. Much later? Yeah, much later. It took three or four years afterwards. It was a very cathartic thing to have done, to go back and look at what really happened to me. Because it, it gave me an opportunity to have retrospection, to look back at what I've been through. How do you explain how Yanni became Yanni? It's, it's a phenomenon. Certainly against every trend. I mean, Yanni's not played on pop music radio stations. How do you explain it? 
mm, it's very difficult. I can't look back at my career and say, you know, because we did this, we succeeded. What was your big break? A lot of different kinds of there breaks. There was no one big recorded no, there contract. wasn't. There wasn't. It was, it was cons uh, consistent and uh, persistent, uh, going out, touring a lot, te certain key television appearances. I think the huge break was when I did The Acropolis, uh, mm -hmm. and it was televised. Uh, a lot of people around the world saw it and enjoyed it. And that, but it was the fact that I, I was persistent and, and I knew that people would enjoy what I had, that I could connect with them, that it would have an effect on them, I would get through. It's emotional and temporal, right? Yes, it's both. And, and it's one thing for me to think that, it's another thing to see it happen. You know, sometimes artists, we think we can touch people, but maybe we can't. So it's nice to see that the reality follows your thought. Did you handle it well, success? I thought I did. I thought I did. We'll take a break and come back with more. Yanni, the book was out earlier this year, New York Times bestseller, Yanni in Words. The album, released earlier as well, is still out, of course, Ethnicity. We'll ask about that and other things. Don't go away. Okay.